Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is Star Wars The Black Series Yoda in four minutes or less. Technically, from the six-inch line of Star Wars Black Series figures, Yoda tops out at three and a quarter inches, which puts him about Luke's belt high. At the other end of the spectrum is Chewbacca, standing at eight inches tall, but the crazy thing is that both figures cost the same at initial retail. Of course, that means you're paying $6.15 an inch for Jedi Master, where Wookiee only runs you two fifty. <laughs> Articulation is good, not great. Yoda has a ball and socket head, which lets him look left and right, but not much room to look up to the heavens pondering the force or to cast his gaze down in disgust at Luke's lack of focus. He's got rotating and pivoting shoulders, elbows, wrists, and ankles, thigh swivels, and even an ab crunch swivel. The only thing he's really lacking are knees, but I'll be honest, I don't know if Yoda's species has knees to begin with, so this might be completely accurate. What bugs me is that this line is supposed to be about the exacting detail, and for the articulation of this figure to not actually be able to emulate the main pose the character holds in so much of The Empire Strikes Back is unacceptable. His legs are too long and don't bend. He doesn't need to be able to do cartwheels. He needs to look like an alien frog that has been compressed by the emotional burden of the horrible things he has seen and been responsible for. For the duration of Empire Strikes Back, Yoda is basically just sitting on his haunches. This figure has no haunches. Paint apps are manimal. He's got his base green color and then a light gray, practically white for his hair that just looks slapped on there in such a lazy mechanical fashion, which is totally not how his hair should look. If you watch the film at all, Hasbro, his hair is so thin and sparse that there isn't really even a color registering visually. And I'm colorblind. He's got green eyes and then finger and toenails and nothing else. There's no subtle wash or anything to give him a feeling of texture or life. Nothing to enhance the details of the sculpting that has a lot of little nooks and crannies. It's absolutely the least paint they could apply to the figure and still make it look like Yoda. He's dressed in an appropriately sack piece of cloth fabric for his robe and he's got a brown plastic belt with no paint and whatever that is he wears around his neck, again with no paint detail. He's got a snake wrapped around his neck which is a nice nod to the vintage line of Star Wars figures but to be honest it makes no more sense for him to have it now than it did then. I'll admit that I didn't have time to look up that snake's origin. It's possibly played a key role in the Battle of Yavin, or was once owned by Bail Organa or something. Feel free to educate me in the comments section. Yoda also comes with his Gimmer Stick, or as I like to call it, his cane, because I'm the type of person who only accept the things that happened in the movies as canon. I refuse to believe that his cane was specially carved from the bush of the Gimmer Tree on the planet Kashyyyk, and that he chews on it to get nutrients from the juices inside that also happen to aid in his ability to meditate. Yeah, his cane has an origin story, but we still don't have a name for what kind of alien frog species he comes from. All right, I had time to look up a couple of things, just not that snake. <laughs> for some reason, Yoda comes with a lightsaber. I'm guessing they meant to include Luke's little flashlight, and somehow things got mixed up during production, and they ended up putting in a small lightsaber. I watched Empire Strikes Back 17 times before I wrote this review today, and didn't see Yoda with a lightsaber at any point, but I wanted to make sure before I called Hasbro out on the ineffectiveness of their quality control. Maybe it's an extended universe thing or something, I don't know. This figure is a hard sell. While I acknowledge that it's close enough to being in scale with the rest of the line, it's just such a tiny, insubstantial thing that barely weighs more than the $20 bill you have to trade for it. And it doesn't come with enough accessories to make up for it. R2-D2 at least came with a third leg and seven attachments. For the average collector, this figure is an easy pass. If you're a Black Series completist or keeping your fingers crossed for a Dagobah playset, then if you see it, buy it. And if two you see, then for the next collector, leave one. Thank you.